Simple Cyber Defense weekly updates for January 2nd, 2021. Welcome back to Simple Cyber Defense. This is the new year of 2021. In this episode, we're going to look back at the major security impacts that happened in the year 2020. And we're going to start off with the T-Mobile attack. Now, T-Mobile had two different breaches in the year 2020. Once in early 2020s, around March, and another one more recent at around December. So what happened in this breach was an attacker got a hold of some employees' email and were able to take over those accounts. And then from there, they pivoted into getting into user data accounts. So why did they do that? They were just basically looking for information and what can be done to stop this. What they're going to have to do is just be mindful that their data is out there and be more cautious when dealing with emails and texts which could be used by attackers to get them to give them access to their accounts. Because of the data that they've stolen from T-Mobile, they are going to make their spamming attacks a little bit more looking legitimate. Because they have their phone numbers, they have their credentials, and they can easily make an email look like it came from T-Mobile, get them to click on the link. Just be a lot more cautious about those emails that are coming through. So the next biggest attack point in 2020 is due to the impact of the coronavirus, many employees were working from home. And that made them a prime target for attackers. Now three things in particular that were the biggest hazards from working from home. The first one is the employees home Wi-Fi security. Now when you're in the office there are many controls that are in place to protect the Wi-Fi networks and the employees computers and whatever attaches to the internet. But when they're at home most likely the users don't have all those protections. If they're using their weaker protocols like WEP they could allow attackers to easily access their network traffic. So what should they be doing is the first thing they should be doing is they should be using a VPN if they are connecting to the company's network. The VPN will ensure that attackers can't easily uh, sniff the traffic back and forth. Another thing they could be doing is using the strongest protocol out there at the time of this recording is WPA2 but WPA3 is coming around soon and will be rolling out and when that does I urge people to go through WPA3. The next thing that is a hazard for workers at home are phishing scams. Now these attacks will be very sophisticated because of all the data breaches, emails with attachments and links, it'll make it, the attackers will make these look really legitimate like they're coming from the company. But again, you just have to really think about what you're looking at and what is happening with these things. And if need be, probably the best thing to do is just get on the phone with someone and say, hey, I got an email from supposedly you, is this true? 
if it is yes or no. And the last thing that is a hazard for remote workers is insecure passwords. Uh, simple passwords are incredibly easy for hackers to attack. And I created a video on my YouTube channel which goes over the many steps that you can go to increase your password security. So I urge you to go find that and look at that. It is basically a few simple things that you can do to increase your password security. Like the complexity of it, not reusing it, and basically using a password manager. For more details, just go to that YouTube video on password security. The next major hazard in 2020 was ransomware. Now it's not going anywhere and it's probably going to continue going on for many, many, many years. And many of these attackers are using emails to trick employees to either open an attachment or click on a link and then infects their computer with the ransomware, which would then spread over the network and just encrypt as much files as they can and extort the company for money. No matter how small of a target you think you are, every single person is a potential target for ransomware. It's not a matter of if you'll be attacked, it's just a matter of when you'll be attacked if you're not taking the proper precautions to protect yourself against ransomware. The biggest protection that you can have against this is user education. Is just to be aware of what attachments you're opening and what links you're opening and making sure that they are really legitimate. The next thing to do is have a very robust backup, offline backup, so that if in the event that all your files are encrypted, at least you have the backups to go up against and hopefully be able to get yourself back up and running as soon as possible. The fourth biggest major incident in 2020 was from Nintendo where they said that 160,000 users were impacted by recent account hacks. What happened was the attacker had gotten access to the Nintendo network and took in over many accounts. And the reason why they were able to do that is to you they were doing was they got into database leaks and they got a list of passwords and they used those passwords to get into the Nintendo these are Nintendo accounts. The best way to prevent this is to never reuse your passwords and to use a unique password for every single account that you have and to constantly change it up every so often in October Google says that it mitigated a total of 2.54 terabyte per second DDoS attack and it is the largest known to date. So what is a DDoS attack? It's basically a distributed denial of service attack and these attack, attack was basically used to try to completely shut down the Google network and luckily many of these attacks were prevent were blocked and prevented. There were some minor down outages for Google that year and luckily everything came back up and running. So there's not much the end user could do to prevent this other than just make sure that really important communication is not relied just solely on Google and we got other means of communication like text and phone calls or other email addresses that you can use in case this does become a longer outage but luckily this did not become a large outage 
the sixth thing that many people are talking about talking in 2020 was the Zoom's security and privacy wars. There are a lot of people that scrutinize Zoom for their lack of security and lack of privacy. And the biggest one for them was the end-to-end -end encryption, which they did manage to fix, and they did implement the end-to-end -end en encryption. But some things that you may want to do is also set up a two-factor authentication through your Zoom account so that if your password does get compromised, the attacker will have to work a little harder in order to get to your account. Uh, Two-factor authentication involves basically two different authentication methods that are used. The first one is your password, and the second one is usually like a token that's either sent to you through email, text, or you have a third-party authentication app like uh, Google Authenticator or or so on that will give you a random generated code every. 60 seconds or so. This will add a layer of protection that that the attacker will find more difficult because not only do they have to have their password, but they also have to find this get this token, which, if done properly, would be more difficult for people to get their hands on because it's randomly generated either through an email or a text message or through the authentication app. So if they don't have access to what the token generates, then they won't be able to get the token. Some other criticisms from Zoom is because of the ease of use, it made it really easy for some troublemakers to what's known as break into a Zoom meeting and even though they weren't invited to the meeting, they were able to make their way into it and see what's going on, hear what's going on. So many people were worried that if they had a private meeting in Zoom discussing sensitive topics, that someone could just hack their way into that meeting, hear what was going on, and take that information and sell it to someone or disclose it online. And that would not be very good for the company. But adding the two factor authentication would mitigate this issue because not only do you need the password to get in, but you also need the authentication token, which is a lot more difficult to for an attacker to get. So the last thing in twenty twenty that happened was the big soul wins attack and this was a massive attack that is still being investigated today and a lot of firms like Costco, AT&T, Microsoft, Comcast, McDonald's as well as financial giants like Visa, MasterCard and also some many businesses and also government agencies were using the solar winds technology to do their business. So what happened was an attacker managed to trick many of the software that these vendors were using into updating a fake update that allowed the attackers to gain advantage or gain a hold into their network and to steal a lot of sensitive information. So what exactly does this mean for the end users, for all of us? It means that a lot of our data is out there now. And, and the biggest thing to do is to just be aware and be more mindful of the emails and phone calls that you get that most likely a lot of attackers will be using to try to gain your accounts or 
try to steal money from you. So the best thing to do is just be more diligent and be very careful of what you open in your emails and your text messages and, and also in Facebook. And also, another thing to remember is this is still being investigated, so it could be a much bigger thing than is being reported now. Like I said, many government agencies were also impacted by this, so this could be a huge impact to everyone. And once more details are related or sent out through this, I will report on it and tell you what you need to know. And so those were the major impacts of 2020 security, cybersecurity wise. Um, most of them look like have to deal with gaining information and and then using that information to send out spammy emails and trying to use social engineering to gain more information to get either money or different accounts. So it seems like the biggest takeaway from this is to be very mindful of what's out there. It's very scary that a lot of our information on there is basically now in the hands of hackers and they're using this information to make very fraudulent emails look very legitimate and they're taking their time to get into your accounts and then either doing personal identity theft or just trying to trick you into giving them money through either extortion or ransomware so the biggest thing you probably should do is to freeze your credit score, freeze your credit, keep an eye on all your bank accounts information and make sure that every charge that is on there is legitimate and as soon as you find one that's not legitimate, report it right away. Because the biggest ways to stop identity theft is to stop it very early. The longer it goes on, the harder it is for you to get out of it. So this concludes this episode and review of 2020. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and share it with all your friends. And and be on the lookout for the next episode. If you like what was in this episode, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing with others. For more information, to suggest a topic, or to donate, head over to simplecyberdefense.com.